pre-calc, it, the closure problem 5-136, it wants us to solve some inequalities. So remember when we're solving inequalities, there's like a shaded area. So this one, um, we want to get a zero, like get everything on the left-hand side so that there's a zero here. So I just subtract six on both sides. And then I want to get a common denominator here because I, I want to make this so that it's very easy for me to plug numbers in here. Um, so get a common denominator. So I just multiply the 6 by um, x plus 3 over x plus 3. And then I'm going to make them as a single fraction. And then I can um, see I distribute it. And then I can combine like terms and get a quadratic on the top and I can get um, I can actually factor this so it factors like that okay and then I, I want to get split points split points are places where the graph changes from positive to negative so split points are basically going to be the x-intercepts and if there's any vertical asymptotes. So we can see here that there's a vertical asymptote right here at negative 3. And there's going to be a split point at 15 and negative 1. And maybe that doesn't make sense to you when I say it. So I'm going to actually show you um, the graph of this on Desmos because I think I have it ready to go. Desmos. So, so here's the graph of it. So I can see that my split points are like negative 1, like we said, and 15. Well, 15. And then there's this, there's a vertical asymptote at negative 3. And so you can see, um, in our case, we're looking for where the graph is positive. So the graph changes from positive values to negative values every time it crosses this uh, x-axis. So that's why we're using these split points. And um, sometimes it'll change at the um, vertical asymptote. So. That's why we do that, why we get the split points. And I already showed you how to get the split points. So what I do is I take my split points and I just put them on a number line. And I'm just, it's like, I don't really know what the graph looks like. So I'm just fishing around trying to see which regions are the regions where, um, where I have a solution. So in other words, I'm going to, plug in for x, I'm going to plug in something in the region that's to the left of negative 3. So let's just plug in negative 4. And I'm going to see if it makes this inequality true or false. If it makes it true, that's part of the solution. And if it makes it false, it's not. So, um, But the reason we have it set up, we did all that algebra, is I can easily, I don't have to compute the value here. I can just compute whether it's positive or negative. And that's, believe me, it's, easy, it's nicer that way. So negative 4, if I plug it in here, I don't care what I get. I just know that I'm going to get something negative here. Let me use a pencil. This little piece right here is going to be negative if I, if I plug negative 4 in. If I plug negative 4 into this piece, this little factor, I'm going to get another negative. So I'll have a negative times a negative. And if I plug a negative 4 down here, that's going to make this bottom negative. So I'm going to have a negative times a negative, which is a positive, over a negative, positive divided by negative. I'm going to get a negative value in this region over here. So a negative, if this fraction is negative, well, that's not true. So I'm going to write F for false. This region over here is not a solution region. So now I have to find out in between negative 3 and negative 1, is that part of my solution or not? So I'll just plug a number in that's in between negative 3 and negative 1. So I'm going to choose negative 2. 
And so I usually just do this by, I just do it either in my head or maybe I'll make little marks on my paper. So I'm in my mind, I'm plugging negative two in right here. And I don't even care that what the answer is. I just care whether it makes this negative or positive. Negative two, if I plug it in for negative X, or for X, it gives me a negative. It's negative 17, by the way. Negative two, if I plug it in here, it gives me negative one, which is a negative number. Negative two, when I plug it in down here, I get a positive number. So now I've got a negative times a negative divided by a positive. So that's a positive over a positive. That's, that's a, po a positive fraction when I plug negative two in. So I'm gonna say true here. Then I'm going to I'm going to keep doing it. I have to do it for this region, the re, you know, the region in here, the region in between these split points. You can go like this if you want. The region in between negative 1 and 15, I'm going to check that. So a nice number to work with that's between negative 1 and 15 would be 0. Plug a 0 in here, I get negative. Plug a zero here, I get a positive. Plug a zero here, I get a positive. So a positive or a negative times a positive is a negative, and a negative over a positive, that gives me a negative. Negative is that's a negative fraction over here makes this inequality false. Because it, it's this is supposed to be greater than zero. So I'm gonna write false. And then I'm going to plug in anything bigger than 15. So I'm guessing 16 would be my easiest. So 16 minus 15 gives me positive. It's positive and positive. Positive makes it true. So now I know my solution region is, let's see, I don't have the little underline thing. So my solution is going to be, in between these two split points, negative three and negative one. And it's also gonna be uh, 15 infinity. So I'm gonna say that my answer, we'll check that and make sure. Yeah, my answer is right here. What's well, right here? So I'll write it more nicely. Okay. I'm going to do let the next one. Okay, so the next one is letter B. And so I'm going to go through the same procedure. I'm going to um, get all everything on one side and have it set um, not equal to but have a, a zero on the this side of the inequality so i moved everything over and then i i'm going to factor it because when i factor it it makes it nice for plugging numbers in so i just factored it and then i look at my split points this thing does not have an asymptote so that's nice this thing is just some kind of a a quartic it, probably goes like uh, something like that. Um, so I have these split points. And so I'm going to go ahead and um, plug numbers in. I actually did, I have this up on Desmos, so I'll just show this to you. Where did it go? So we know it's a quartic, and actually I should have known that it's going to bounce right here at the um, zero. So it changes from positive to negative values every time there's an x-intercept. So we know that's at negative six. Zero is a double intercept, so it like bounces. And so it actually doesn't change, um, it doesn't change from positive to negative there. And then that there's my seven. So let's go back and see what we had here. So and that's what we had when we just did it algebraically. So plug in a number. So we're just going to plug some numbers in right here because it's nice and easy. So we want this left hand side for for this to be a um, a true equation or for it to be a solution. 
we want this left hand side to be negative. Okay, um, because it says less than or equal to zero. Okay, so let's um, choose something to the left of negative six. So I'm just going to use negative seven. And in my mind, I'm just going to ask myself what happens when I plug negative seven in to each of these factors. So negative seven squared, that's going to be a positive number. Negative seven plus six, that's going to be a negative number. Negative seven minus seven, that's going to be a negative number. So I have a positive times a negative times a negative. That's going to give me, this whole thing's going to end up being some positive number. Positive number does not make my inequality true. So I'm going to say false over here on the left. Okay, in between negative six and zero, a nice number would be, I guess, negative one I could plug in. So negative one squared is a positive number. Negative one plus six would be a positive number. Negative one minus seven would be a negative number. So I've got a positive times a positive times a negative. That's going to make negative. That makes this true. So I'm going to write T for true. Now I'm going to plug in some number that's in between zero and seven. So one is a nice number to plug in. So in my mind, I'm just saying one squared is a positive number. One plus six is a positive number. One minus seven is a negative number. So I've got a positive times a positive times a negative. So that's going to make this negative. So it's actually, we're going to have this region is also true. And we know that from the graph because we looked at the graph and I think the graph, well, we'll look at, the graph went like, I think this or something. So, so we actually know that that's true. A lot of times it alternates. It'll go false, true, false, true, but this one has a bounce right here. So it's true right here and here. Now let's try um, a number to the right of seven would be eight. So eight squared is going to be a positive number. Eight plus six is a positive number. And eight minus seven, that's a positive number. So I have a positive times a positive times a positive. That makes it positive. So if this left-hand side is positive, that makes this um, inequality false. So I'll go false. So now I know my solution is where, the, are, is where all the numbers that make my inequality true. So I'm just going to say that it's right here in between negative 6 and 7. And that's my answer right there. I'm using my special little brackets because it's interval notation because I got this um, underline right here. That's what gives me the um, square brackets.